Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Thanks so much for being here. Hope everybody is doing well. Well, a subject has come up, guys, that I think is important to cover. And it's important to cover for those of you who have been the scapegoat in your family. I hate to say we're the scapegoat in your family. Usually it's a lifelong sentence, right? doesn't end. Once a scapegoat, always a scapegoat. That's how it is with these narcissistic family units. And if you haven't watched my narcissistic family unit videos parts one and two please watch them because it explains a lot about the narcissistic family unit and how the scapegoat is really never acknowledged or taken seriously and uh, they're really like a non-family member from the start many scapegoats have had to leave their family of origin and their town just to simply save their life because the negativity and the put downs the sarcasm the jokes about them go on and on and more so what this video is about is why aren't the scapegoats accomplishments ever acknowledged in a narcissistic family <laughs> if this is you listen up because I have a lot to say I've seen this a lot and it's not right and we have to ask ourselves why the scapegoat is just pretty much invisible when it comes to any achievements and any successes in their life or for that matter any positive attributes that they have really aren't mentioned at all so let's explore why first of all if you are the scapegoat of your family I am so sorry it is a real heavy sentence you know in life to carry it affects everything about you you know uh, as a child it, you know your first years and your childhood years really shape who you are and if you're constantly put down made fun of berated mocked uh, the brunt of sarcastic family jokes and uh, really resented by certain family members you're gonna grow up you know feeling that you don't belong anywhere you're gonna grow up feeling like you don't deserve anything because that's how your narcissistic family made you feel now usually a narcissistic family unit is run by one head narcissist that has all the power it could be a parent a step parent an older sibling a younger sibling an aunt uncle wh whoever it is it's uh, a family member that is the head narcissist basically they tell a false narrative and all the other family members are their flying monkeys you know they all join the head narcissist in um, their false narrative they don't get to know the scapegoat at all they don't get to notice any positive attributes or positive gifts that the scapegoat might have they just go along with the narrative that the, the narcissist dishes out everybody has to follow the leader and it's a form of bullying it's serious bullying that the scapegoat really is at uh, you know the scapegoat is the one who's really just at the brunt of all the bullying and um, it, it's very hard to grow up with a positive self-image and to have the confidence that other people have if what you grew up with was the enemy instead of a supportive family unit system now if this has happened to a lot of you out there and I know it has please put it in the comments below let me know if you got away early if you moved away if you went no contact or partial no contact or whether you're still dealing with it now as I said uh, many times scapegoats uh, will leave their family of origin go no contact but they feel if you watched my family Hoover's video <laughs> because yes there are family Hoover's that happen from family narcissists trying to pull you back and as we discussed they try to pull you back so they can abuse you some more so if you have left your family of origin and uh, you find yourself being hoovered back and then really regretting accepting that Hoover and you think that your family is going to turn into totally different people one day you know think again because if you count each and every time incidents have happened when, where you've accepted things with your empathy and your compassion and your kind heart thinking that your family needs you where you were told some kind of false narrative as to why you should be back or they laid guilt trips on you oh you need to be at this wedding or this family get-together it won't look good for the family or whatever guilt trip they put on you and you go and then you find out that you're still getting hurt you're still the brunt of jokes and you're still treated like you were uh, growing up in school again you know you have to understand the narcissists are they have a sense of um, 
you know, arrested development. <laughs> and I'll have a video about that. They don't progress. They don't resolve issues. And it's, it's just always back to one. You know, it's always back to the first position. Uh, you're, you're right back in school and a little kid when you go home. Uh, they don't acknowledge any progress in your life. They don't acknowledge any success in your life. And in fact, they rub other people's success in your face at the same time. An example of that is, um, you know, somebody came to me and said that their family keeps sending them emails about, um, you know, other family members who, and all their successes and how proud they are of them. And, you know, the scapegoat had far greater successes and nothing was ever said to them. There was never any campaign sending their their work or their accomplishments out to the masses and to the relatives and congratulating them and bragging about them. Nope. Basically, they just ignored any ex success from the scapegoat. And uh, if the scapegoat ever tried to, you know, send them anything that was a form of success, well, that narcissistic family ignored it, didn't say a word about it. And in fact, not only said a, didn't say a word about it, they just kind of doubted it, rolled their eyeballs as if it never happened, gaslit the scapegoat uh, like it never happened. So it's totally different treatment if you grew up as the scapegoat in the family. And if you, that's you, believe me, just let me know in the comments there because I have heard this so many times. I've witnessed this so many times and it's heartbreaking because the scapegoat is trying so hard to just get a compliment out of their family, to just get a positive word, and it never, ever seems to happen. Like I said, they'll brag about other family members. Oh, look at this person did. Why do you think that is, guys? Put it in the comments. Why do you think that they can't acknowledge anything good that the scapegoat has done? And many times, as I said, that scapegoat who has left the family unit has had extreme successes I mean, off the chart successes. There's nothing that'll stop a scapegoat who's away from the abuse and who's healed or healing and around more positive people. You know, sometimes there's this, I'll show them, you know, energy about the scapegoat. If they get strong, if they get healed, many times they're on a mission, you know, nothing can stop me now. And they're like a steamroller. They do incredible things. So just know if you are scapegoated, and you're thinking about going no contact or getting away. I'm not here to make your decision. But you can't succeed if you're in abuse. You can't succeed if you're being mocked and eyeballs are being rolled at everything you say. And you're being uh, treated like a non-human being with nothing interesting to say. And treated like you don't have any gifts to offer the world. Well, I'm telling you, you do. There's nothing more successful than a scapegoat who has... Uh, gotten around more positive people and their tribe, people that actually are like-minded with the same big heart and empathy and outlook. You know, the scapegoat can do incredible things, and many scapegoats have done incredible things. Many times God sets them aside for a reason, as I said, and they're chosen in life to do things for God. They have a calling that they're supposed to carry out, and sometimes that's a huge calling. But they can't do it in their family of origin, just like Jesus couldn't, you know, perform miracles in Nazareth. <laughs> Nobody had faith in Jesus there. Prophet hath no respect, not even among his family, nor in his hometown, it says in the word. There is truth to that. So it could be you have a mission somewhere else. It could be a huge mission somewhere else. And if you stay around the negativity and the put-downs and the laughter and the mocking, you know, it just eats away at you. It eats away at you. It's hard to uh, do anything positive or to see yourself the way God sees you and see yourself the way like-minded people would see you or people outside of that area of your narcissistic family. But just don't expect any acknowledgement from them. Best advice is don't, ex don't, don't expect them to suddenly accept you or suddenly change, or suddenly be so proud of you, or suddenly commend you on accomplishments you've done, which exceed anybody in the family. Why do you think that is? Well, as I said in my Narcissistic Family Unit videos, parts one and two, you could be the Joseph of the family. 
Now Joseph's family in the Bible were extremely jealous of him. They wanted him out. They didn't like him having big dreams. They knew deep down he was different and he was favored by their father. That's what they thought anyway. It was a jealous thing. Jealousy really is toxic. And they threw their brother Joseph in a pit and sold him into slavery. They wanted him out because, you know, compared to Joseph, they felt inferior. So most times it's because they feel inferior around you if you are the scapegoat. And it really kills them to say anything positive about you. They resent you. You know, they don't have your empathy. They don't have your big heart and your other talents. And they're very limited many times. You know, they're very simple people, more in this world. And they see something different in you. They see a light. They see a big heart that they don't have. And they don't like it. God saw everything. And he acts accordingly. And if you're faithful, he will get you through every situation on your own. He's with you. You are never alone. If you are isolating or if you've uh, been scapegoated and you just decide to be hyper-independent, and I'll have a video on that and why people are hyper-independent, if that's you, just know God saw everything and sees everything, and he will always provide for you. He will always protect you if you are walking with him and if you're doing the right thing. And he will, he will deal with the people that treated you uh, that way. He will deal with the haters. You're going to have to trust God 100% for your provision. And you'll learn that that's the best thing to do. And you don't have to put up with mockery and pleasing people and uh, worried about if you're walking on eggs with them or doing the right thing or you know, having people accept you. The Lord accepts you. The Lord loves you. You're, you're his child. He wants you to be protected. He wants you to be safe, protected, and succeed. A lot of people have families that are supportive and love them and are there for them in their times of need and will cheer them on and have faith in them. But if you come from a narcissistic family unit, it's the opposite. You're dealing with the enemy. They want you to eat dirt and die. They don't want you to succeed. So that's why it's better to rely on God be around other people that are more positive, that believe in you. Find your tribe. Find your tribe. Get a healthy distance from that negativity, and you will go on to do great and mighty things. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you were the scapegoat of the family, and if your family ever acknowledged your successes. Also, if you're a scapegoat that left and had a lot of great successes, let me know. I think that's fantastic. So if you don't hear it from your family, you'll hear it from me. Put it in the comments and we'll cheer you on here in this community. So thanks so much, everybody. Make sure you follow on Facebook, Rumble, Rumble and X, also on Quora. And uh, if anybody would like one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com and I'll be happy to send you that information. Also know that I keep you in prayer daily, all of you. If you have a special prayer request, put it in the comments below. And I do read the comments, guys, and keep you all in prayer. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Make sure that you follow on Rumble. I just caught up that page. And um, also on Facebook. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. God bless.